Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. It's a smallie. Get in here. <laughs> you little jerkbait fat. Oh, he got me right in the... All right, hold on. Hold on, buddy. Hold on. Got it. <laughs> Came right off. There's a start right here at Sholo Lake. I'll tell you what, folks, trying to find these fish here can be tough, but it can be rewarding and a lot of fun. And uh, here in the White Mountains, and we're in our fall season right now. And, uh, you know, I'll just pick up that jerk bait. When you have a little bit of wind, let's let that guy go. When you have a little bit of wind and the water's 65 degrees, I'm telling you, man, sometimes that jerk bait can be a lot of fun. I'm just throwing a little olive back uh, jerk bait. Something's kind of small, you know, three, four inch. Works really good on this lake. And uh, it's, we gotta have a lot of rocks on Sholo Lake. You know, when I was a kid, I used to catch a lot of largemouth bass in here. But, whoo, boy, has it changed over the years. It's kind of been more of a smallmouth lake and a lot of walleye, if you love walleye fishing. This lake held the state record for a long time. I believe it probably still does. It's either this or Full Hollow. One of the two have the state record walleye in it. But uh, was told there was another state record walleye in here. But today we're trying to go for some smallies. If we catch some walleyes, it might be a little bit of a bonus. But I'll tell you what, you can't beat uh, October and you can't beat November for those walleyes if you love fishing for them. When the water really starts getting colder, man, they, they seem to really start hitting pretty good on these jerk baits and, and things like that. But uh, right now we're gonna start working the rocky points. We're just going down the bank. What's cool about this lake is it's not so big. You can cover it with your trolling motor, which you have to with a big boat like this. But uh, you know, a lot of rock, you can see all the rock that they have to hide in. And uh, I'm not really moving the bait that fast. I'm just kind of jerking it and pausing it. A couple of jerks, pause it. They're really, I didn't see a lot of surface activity this morning. When we got here, we got here a little bit late. But uh, with that being said, when the breeze picks up a little bit, I'll put the drop shot down and the Texas rig worms and things like that and try to throw some cranks or some jerk baits out here. You know, one thing about casting a jerk bait that's really important to remember is when you throw it out there, you want to make sure that when you're popping it, you're leaving slack in your line after every pop. So when you pop it, you let your rod tip go back where you originally started the pop. So in other words, if I start the pop and I have my line tight, I pull it and I give it slack. It allows the bait to kind of walk underwater and turn. If you just pull it with no slack, then basically what ends up happening is you're kind of pulling the bait down like this. Not that that doesn't work at times, but you want to get that real popping motion out of a jerk bait. So when you throw it out there, I throw it out there and I just pop, put slack in it, pop, pop, put slack in it. Every time I pop it, I'm putting slack in the line. Oh, there's one right there. He nailed it. He nailed it right off that point where he should be. This one feels a little bit bigger. Ah, he's about the same size. Boy, he looks like he got ate up by one of them birds. Look at the side of that fish. Look how they're just grabbing the tail end of that. I'll kind of get him in here. Maybe he'll come off. We'll catch and release. All right, right there. Another smallie. These aren't big ones, but at least we're getting bit. But look at the side of that fish. That's where one of them birds came down and tried to get him up shallow. Those gray herrings. Man, that's what that was a picture perfect cast, folks, right here. We have this point that comes out. It's real rocky. I'm in about, well, it's about five foot of water, but I was off in about 10 foot of water, threw off on the front of that point, and that's where he hit. So when you're fishing for smallmouth, especially rocky points is an awesome place to catch fish. You know, I'm using the TR702, which is a medium action seven foot taipan rod for my jerk bait. Now you gotta be careful to get too long of rod for your jerk bait because the whole ticket when you're throwing it out there, when you're bringing it in, is you're kind of pointing the rod tip towards the, towards the water. And if you've got a real long, long tip, then you're out here like this and you're wearing your arm out a lot. I like to tuck in 
and get it as close to my body as I can when I'm jerking it in like that. Now, the, the shorter rod allows me to, to uh, bring it a little closer to my body when I'm throwing it out there, to where if you were using a real long rod, you'd be out there and you'd be hitting the water as you're bringing it in. So be real careful with that. Seven footer's perfect for me. I'm a six foot one tall guy, so um, not a real tall guy, but tall enough to where seven foot's just perfect for me. Got that one. That's a nice one. That, that's, that's a good fish, whatever it is. He's running with it too. <laughs> that could be a walleye. That could be a walleye. Yep, I think that's what it is. No, no, it's a big old largemouth, folks. Look at the size of that fish. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, that's a big old largemouth right there, folks. <laughs> Look at the size of that monster. Uh, little spinner bean pass. That's what I'm talking about, son. <laughs> oh, I am in a tournament right now here. Oh my goodness. That is a chunk right here in the beautiful White Mountains. Look how beautiful that fish is. Let me get a quick pick. And uh, I gotta get a Facebook pick here. That's just too good a fish to pass up, baby. All right, we'll let this butte go. Look at that fish, folks. We'll let her go. Did I mention that when I was a kid, I used to catch a lot of largemouth in this lake? Go on, baby. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, son. A little spinner bee bass. <sighs> We got a little bit of this wind blowing and just slow rolling this thing down there along the dam area, you can catch some beautiful fish, you know? You know, and it's so funny because there's a small mouth in here. When you have small mouth, a lot of times I won't run like a grub trailer. I'll just let the bait go as it is. Just a white spinner bait. Beautiful fish, they're down there. And slow roll this thing. I'm using a 3 8 ounce bait using a medium heavy rod from Taipan. It's an awesome rod, it's my spinnerbait rod here. My ardent reel, and I'll tell you what, use 17 pound test line and I'm good to go. That fish, all it did was load up because I was throwing out there and I, and I just let it slowly roll, slowly roll. And what I'm trying to do is I'm not trying to keep it high in the water column at all. What I'm trying to do is get it down there where I'm bumping all these rocks coming over the rocks in the wood. The one thing about a spinnerbait versus a crankbait is you're not getting hung up quite a bit around this wood and things like that. So, and you got the flash, you know, with the water being muddy. What a nice fish. Got him. Another good one. Oh my, this thing's a monster. <laughs> This thing is a monster. Oh, oh, look at the size of that beast. Look at the size of that beast. Cholo Lake Bass right there, folks. <laughs> oh, oh, I gotta get this fish in. I gotta get this fish in. Oh, I got him hooked pretty good, but I got a light wire spinner bait on. There we go, folks, another giant. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness, what a fish, what a fish. <laughs> that might be bigger than the other one. That is a monster bass, monster bass. <laughs> largemouth bass, just when I thought I couldn't get a largemouth bass out here, throw a spinner bait. And look what you get. Boy, my dad would be proud of that. He's a spinnerbait specialist, let me tell you. <laughs> he loves spinnerbaits. Uh, he'll see this and want to go fishing. Let's let that fish go. These are five pounders, folks. Watch, watch that fish. <laughs> folks, 
I can't tell you enough how much fun it can be in the beautiful White Mountains at times when you find the right bite and uh, use the right equipment and the right bait. Let me tell you, it's a lot of fun. And uh, make no mistake, this isn't something that happens all the time, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun when you do get on them. I think a lot of the reason why we're catching some of these bigger fish and, and the fishing's, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's great. It's not great by no means, but we're catching some of the nicer fish and we're getting bit a little more often on this lake is because we have this low pressure. We got a front blowing through and you can see it right over there. We're fixing to get hammered by a bunch of rain. Bunch of flooding in the valley area down in Phoenix was going on yesterday. We managed to get out here early this morning where we could hit that window of uh, some sunshine and maybe a little bit of clouds, but I was really worried about the rain, but I'm so glad we came out and, uh, and, and do this. Now, one thing very important that I'm doing that you can do even on, on any lake when you go to a dam area like this and fish these rocks is this is a 3 8 ounce bait, you know, light wire spinner bait, I love it, white, you know, it's a white, it's a beautiful bait. But here's the deal. The main key is, is I'm slow rolling this thing to where I'm, I'm kind of almost using the rod tip to pop it over the rocks. Now, if you just throw it out there and wind it in, it's not that you can't catch fish, but sometimes it's your retrieve. You know, when we caught that big fish and then I got bit again, I kind of figured out that I've got to keep this thing on the bottom the best I can. And if I can't, if I'm in deeper water than what I am right now, I'm in, you know, 15, 10, 15, 20 foot, if I get anything deeper than that, really, sometimes even deeper than 15, I'm gonna go to a one ounce spinner bait and bounce that thing off the bottom. Cause boy, when it hits those rocks, it flutters and it's just awesome. But it wasn't something I was really planning on doing, but the conditions warranted me throwing the spinner bait because of the little bit of wind blown we got. This wind is actually blowing into the bank. So it's making it really nice. One thing about a light wire spinner bait is you, you not so much uh, when you when you get bit. One thing that's really important is is set the hook hard. Get which you, get your hook set, but you got to remember that light wire spinner bait is gonna try to fold open on you, and but you get so much of a better throb off the blades when you use a light wire spinner bait. But you don't want to muscle. I don't care if you have 50 pound test on. You don't want to try to muscle the fish too much. You know, I bring them up for the show. I would be panicking like crazy uh, watching that fish come out of the water if I was in a tournament. I'd definitely let, let him ride it out, stay down, you know, and try to keep him from jumping like that. I do it for you folks at home, but that's, you don't want to be doing that, you know? Don't let him come out of that water. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing really important on our little lakes up here that have a little bit of dinge to them, when you get into muddy water, I love silver blades when you're in clear water. This is kind of stained, muddy, so I still like that silver, the flash off that silver blade, but go with a gold as well. If you go with a tandem like that where you have a gold and a silver blade, a lot of times you'll get a lot of flash in that muddier water off this gold. And man, I'll tell you what, with the trout we have in our lakes up here, they put off a little gold tinge to them when they're darting through the water. And a lot of times those fish will think they're chasing trout or something and, and just hammer it. But the, you know, go with the different colored blades like this and you'll catch a lot more fish. Hey folks, a couple of different baits that I love to throw when I come to Sholo Lake here is uh, number one, the Rico. Early in the morning you get out here and it's beautiful out. I love to throw the Rico. Anything with a little chartreuse tip tail is awesome. Uh, this is the Gold Digger. It's an awesome bait for up here. It kind of resembles a little perch or bluegill, which is awesome for the fish up here, seeing how we don't have shad. So this is a good bait. The other thing I really like to do is I'll drop shot. And my favorite's the Arizona Custom Baits. It's, a, it's an ox blood with a light red flake in it. And it's an awesome bait to throw. It, you can even go with like a purple or something like that. Works really good, but I've done really well with that. The ticket here though is, because the water's a little bit dingier, is I use a shorter leader. 
so I don't use a real long leader on my drop shot. I'll, I'll bring it to about six inches and it works out perfect for this drop shot, okay? The other thing is, is the sticko. This is a three inch little Houdini sticko. Now, Bass Pro makes these, these are awesome. Three inches are perfect for the smallmouth in this lake. I won a tournament on that particular bait the last time, a little bass club tournament here at the beginning of the spring, and it was on that particular bait right there. You throw this on a little number one wide gap hook, and uh, you'll catch a lot of fish on it. But you gotta throw it with like six or eight pound test line with a, with a, uh, a braid to uh, floral leader so you get a real good cast with it, and that'll help you out a bunch. Use a little medium action rod. That'll be perfect for that. Obviously, the jerk baits are all, uh, a great ticket when the wind's blowing just a little bit. Crank baits are good, but I like to throw a jerk bait or I'll go to my spinner bait. And of course, this is the spinner bait of choice today, obviously. A white spinner bait, no trailer on it, because we have smallmouth. I was thinking we'd catch some smallmouth, but it doesn't mean that the largemouth won't hit it just because it doesn't have that grub trailer on it. And uh, this is a gold willow leaf with a, a silver blade. That's it right there, 3 8 ounce. Those are the few baits that I like to tie on here at Sholo Lake when I come. White Mountain Lakes are just a bit different than the bigger lakes down below, but remember, a bass is a bass no matter where you go, and you'll find that a lot of the techniques that you throw on other lakes that you fish, you can bring them here and throw them as well. You're just fishing a little bit shallower water. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we've had a great time on Sholo Lake today. It's been a little bit slow, but we caught the right fish. And I'll tell you what, anytime you catch a couple of giants like that, you've had a successful day. And uh, I'm getting off the lake because we got a big old storm coming through here in a little while, and I don't want to be caught in it. But I'll tell you what, we've had a good time. We've been out here for about four or five hours and went around the lake. The cool thing about these lakes up here is you can get on the trolling motor and just go around the lake a couple of times. Find a few hot spots, find a few points you like, and get out there and catch a few fish. And, and a lot of times if you let it rest and go back, you can catch another fish. We do that a lot, especially in our bass club. When you're fishing eight hours, you'll go around the lake three times, you know? But we have a lot of fun. Try a spinner bait. Try some of these techniques I've showed you when you come back up here, and you'll have a lot of fun. And don't forget, they've got a store here that sells baits and a good camping area here at Sholo Lake and uh, they've got docks and rental boats as well. So come up and join us here in the White Mountains. We'll see you on the water next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>